In this video tutorial, you will learn how to modify existing geometry within Adapt Builder. Using the editing tools within Builder, we can quickly and easily make adjustments to an existing model. On screen, we have a multi-level model. Each level in this model is the same. We're going to go ahead and make changes to just one level, and then we could copy this up to other levels or make the changes on other levels as well. So in single level mode, we're at level two, so we're going to go ahead and modify level two. And the modification we're going to make is our architect has asked us to extend these end bays at the north and south of the structure by five foot six inches. So we need to go ahead and push out the columns, beams, slab edge, loads, tendons, uh, support lines. Everything needs to be pushed out at these ends five foot six inches. So we'll go ahead and start to do that. And I'll, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my slab region because that'll be one of the last things I want to modify. And then I'm going to go ahead and window select the vertical beams as well as the grid lines and right click in white space and say hide selection. And we'll do that for some of these other vertical beams and so I'll, after I've selected one I can hold control on my keyboard and window select to add to that selection. So I'll go ahead and do that for these vertical beams and I'll say hide selection. And so on screen we have our columns, beams, and grid line. Now along this location we also will have uh, tendons and support lines. So we want to turn on our support lines in the X direction as well as our banded tendons because our banded tendons in this model run in the X direction. Okay, we can see that we have some tendons in these beams that are also labeled as banded, but we'll go ahead and just quickly select those. Holding control on the keyboard and selecting to add to the selection, then right clicking and say hide selection. So now we have our support lines, our tendons, our banded tendons, our beam and column along this frame line uh, all turned on. So we'll go ahead and select this frame line. So I'm going to zoom in here and we'll just go ahead and start to select the frame line. Zoom over. And so we selected that one frame line. And now I want to go up to my modify tool and use my copy move by coordinates tool. So I'll click on by coordinates icon and that opens the copy move by coordinates dialog window. And on the left hand side we can enter the coordinates we want to move by. So we want to move in the X direction, uh, I mean in the Y direction we want to move this frame line 5.5 feet north. So positive 5.5 in the Y direction. And we'll click on the move button and that will move the uh, tendon beam as well as the grid line and everything that we had selected along that line. So we can come down here and we'll do the same for this south frame line. This time in the by coordinates we'll go ahead and put negative 5.5 feet in order to move it downward. So we'll go ahead and click move and now we've moved our banded tendons, our support line, and our beams in that direction. So we'll go ahead and turn on our slab and now we can go ahead and select our slab and just quickly grab each point and using our snap to vertices along with just the snap to endpoint tool we'll go ahead and move these points to the edge of the column the outer edge of the column so with this done uh, we can see this one looks like we don't really have a point here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and draw some quick construction lines to help me with modeling. So I'll go ahead down here to the line tool, and then we'll put on our snap orthogonal. And I'll snap at the end of this beam and snap at the end of this column. You can see we missed this column, so we missed to move that column, but that's okay. We can come out of that line tool, so right click and click exit 
and then we can click on the slab, use our snap to intersection tool, grab the slab and snap it to the intersection of those construction lines. And then since we missed to move this column, we can grab this column and we can either use our move tool or we can just grab the end point of the column and go ahead and snap it to the end point of the beam since we know that that was moved 5.5 feet. So let's go ahead and make sure we have our snap to vertices off so we snap to the exact end point of the beam and we're moving it five feet. And so now our banded tendons, our X direction support lines, and our beams in the X direction have all been updated. So now we'll go ahead and turn on our beams in the Y direction and we can see we need to extend these beams out. So for this, we'll just quickly use our snap to endpoint tool and select each beam and just snap it to the column below. And once we're done snapping those, we'll come up to the north side and we'll snap these as well. Again, just selecting, left clicking on the end point and then moving up and left clicking to where I want to snap to. So it's just point and click model editing inside of uh, adapt builder so we have our beams in the y direction now uh, extended so now we need to deal with our uh, support lines in the y direction our tendons in the y direction and lastly our loading so I'll go ahead and turn on my support lines in the y direction and when those turned on we can see that our support lines are ending short but we can quickly modify this we'll go to the floor design ribbon and click on the dynamic editor tool and when the dynamic editor opens we can click on the trim tab and we have our trim extend tolerance set to three feet we'll go ahead and bump that up to let's go eight feet just to make sure we get the distance and then window select the ends of the support lines you want to you want to extend so I'll go ahead and window select those and they extend up. I'll go down here and I'll window select those and they extend up. So our support lines are modified and we're okay. So we'll turn off our support lines knowing that those are complete. Our geometry is complete. Now we just need our tendons in the distributed direction as well as our loading. So I'll turn off our banded tendons and then turn on the distributed tendons. We'll go ahead and close out the dynamic editor and see that we need to extend our tendons down here. Uh, also, in this location up here to the slab edge. So we'll go ahead and use our smart tools. We'll go to tendon, smart tools. And when that opens, There's a lot of tendons, so it takes a second to open in this model. So once that opens, we can go ahead and click on our mapping tab and click on our trim extend tool here as well. And again, it's just checking the tendons, so it's going to take a minute to load. But once it loads, we'll have a trim tolerance we can set. So we have our trim tolerance. We can set this to, let's say, 7 feet. And then we can just do our two-point construction line close to the points that we want extended and that didn't work because we the reason why that didn't work is we have two points really close so we need to make sure we're close to the end point of the tendon that we want selected so I'll just zoom in and then we'll try one more time we'll move we'll click here and this time the tendons extended so we'll do the same at the bottom Again, zoom in just to make sure we get close to this uh, end point of the tendon here. And then I'm just using my uh, mouse wheel. I click down on my mouse wheel to pan the model and 
click my second point of my construction line. And the tendons are extended. So now we just need uh, to move. We have a high point here that should be at the beam. So we just need to move this high point. So I'm going to use my align tool. And when, once that tool is ready, we can go ahead and draw a two-point construction line to grab the points that we want to move and, align, and realign. So again, just clicking close to those points with my two-point construction line. And then I want to move those points so that they're aligned with this uh, grid line here, grid line A. So we'll get as close as we can. And just again, another two-point construction line. And the program will move those points to the intersection of this two-point construction line with the tendon. And we can see those are, are now moved. And we can do the same at the top of the structure as well. We'll just quickly go ahead and do that. So we have the align tool still selected. Two point construction line. That is a theme here. Close to the points we want to align. And then again, a two point construction line to draw the line we want those points moved to along the tendon. And now our tendons have been updated, and we can go ahead and close out of this window, close out of the Smart Tendon Editor, and we'll go ahead and turn off the tendons. Having a, a lot of tendons makes, uh, and having them all on makes the viewing a little slower in the model because the program has to refresh those tendons. So I'll just turn off those tendons to help the performance a little bit. And the last thing we need to do now is we need to move our loading. So I'll go ahead and I will turn off all of our structural components except for our slab region. I'll go ahead and turn off our grid lines as well as our support lines. And we'll go ahead and start to look at our loading. So I'll turn on our patch loads. We have all load cases shown. So when we click patch load, all load patch loads are shown. And we can see we just have two patch loads that we just need to adjust quickly. So we'll window select to grab both. Then we'll just click on the point we want to move and then uh, put it to the point we want to move it to and left click to place it. So very quickly we have modified the patch loads in this model. And now we'll go ahead and turn, come down to our visibility grid and turn on our line loads. And so we have some horizontal line loads and some vertical line loads. The first thing we want to do is move our horizontal line loads. So we'll window select those. And then again, we'll just use our modify by coordinates 5.5 feet in the positive Y direction and click the move button. And those are now moved, so we'll do the same thing for these lower ones. We'll just window select, by, uh, copy and move by coordinate, this time negative 5.5 feet, and move. And now those are adjusted, so now we'll just window select these side loads. And then we'll come up here and modify those. We'll just go ahead and left click to grab and left click click to place each of those points. Same thing down here, left click to grab, left click to place. And then lastly on the other side, so we have to zoom out and select our loads here. And so on this side we just have one load, so we'll go ahead and select that. And over here, we'll grab the top node and pull that up. And so now we've modified the model, and we'll go ahead and zoom extents and turn on our model and our tendons. And we now have a modified model. So we could go ahead and remesh, regenerate design sections, and then uh, design the design sections and uh, continue to evaluate the structure. 
For more information on modifying an existing model, check out our help file or visit www.reza.com.